Introduction to ACT Math The math test is 60 minutes long, which is the longest of the four core ACT tests. It's also 60 questions long. Logic would tell you that this means you should spend an average of one minute per question, but that's not always the case. The math test is the only ACT section where the questions have five multiple choice answers. The other three tests only have four answer choices. Don't be overwhelmed by 60 questions in 60 minutes. All the math materials on the ACT coincides with materials taught through 11th grade curriculum. This means you know everything that will be on the test. There won't be any surprises. Know your basics and you will be fine. Let's take a closer look at the topics that will be covered on the test. We can break down the concepts into six main categories. Pre-algebra, which covers percentages, averages, ratios and proportions, and exponents. Elementary algebra, which covers simple equations and evaluating basic algebraic expressions. Intermediate algebra, which covers quadratic equations, solving simultaneous equations, and functions and logs. Coordinate geometry, which covers distance, slope, and formulas of shapes. Plane geometry, which covers angles, area, and perimeter equations, and volume. And finally, trigonometry, which covers trig identities and SOHCAHTOA. For the most part, the questions on the test go from easy to difficult as the test progresses. The problems can be sorted into these three categories. Basic problems, word problems, and challenging problems. Okay, let's lay out your plan of attack. Always start with the basic problems. Don't speed through these. It is imperative to get most of the basic problems correct. Remember, one or two correct answers can make all the difference for your score. So racing through the basic problems and making careless mistakes on them can be very detrimental to your score. Remember, all the questions are worth the same amount of points. So it behooves you to ace the basic problems as opposed to wasting your time trying to crack the most difficult questions, which, by nature, are going to be harder to solve. These early points are the points that should be easily achievable, but students who rush through the beginning will often make careless mistakes. Skip any problem that you don't know. Make sure to circle them on your answer sheet so you can easily return to them once you've gone through the test once. As we discussed, never spend too much time on one problem. Remember, all questions are worth the same amount of points. Don't spend all your time on ones you can't figure out. Once you reach the end of the test, return to the problems you have skipped. Never leave a question blank. There are no penalties for wrong answers, meaning leaving a question blank will only hurt you. There's no downside for guessing. You can write all over the test. Don't try to do all the calculations in your head. There will be space labeled, do your figuring here. That's self-explanatory. Always distill each question down to its essence. What is the question asking? What variable are you solving for? What are you being asked to find? Cross out the inessential information in each problem to make it easier for yourself. Break down the problem into parts. This is especially important on word problems, which will often be long and feature plenty of extraneous information. Let's discuss the use of calculators on the test. Calculators are allowed on the test. Make sure you bring one on test day. You will absolutely need it for graphing and trigonometry equations. Use your standard graphing calculator from school. Your calculator should be proficient in graphing functions, fractions, exponents, linear equations, and slope intercept, aka y equals mx plus b. An important note, don't use your calculator as a crutch. You won't need your calculator on every problem, so don't waste your time using it for basic arithmetic. Remember, your use of time is the most important factor to succeeding on the ACT. Most of the time, mental math is safer for basic arithmetic. Typing everything into your calculator can add up to two minutes on your total time, which could cost you a question or two. These questions could make a difference of a whole point on your composite score. Alright, now that we've covered that, let's get to the lessons.